Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Fresh Teams episode six on the Startup Growth Series. We'll just give a couple of minutes for everyone to join in. Um, while I give you a brief background about um, what the series is all about. Uh, so Fresh Team uh, has been delivering valuable lessons to startup founders, entrepreneurs, HR leaders uh, since the start of this year through our Fresh Team Startup Masterclass. And uh, we've uh, predominantly focused on the Asian audience for our um, live classes. And we've had startup founders from the Asian subcontinent from, uh, from India uh, come in and share their experiences with us. So in this particular episode, we are focusing on uh, employee benefits in small teams. So far, we've been looking at a lot about how we'll uh, scale growth in startups. And in this particular season, we've had a lot of questions from our customers, especially asking us how to retain talent, how to motivate talent when you're a small team and you're competing against one of the big companies. So this episode is uh, to cover that. All right, uh, let's get started. Um, say hello to everybody. Thank you for joining us. And you can share your questions. Uh, please let this be interactive. So if you have any perspectives or questions, feel free to share them in the chat or in the question and answer section that you can see on your screen. Um, yes, so let's let's get started with, um, with the webinar. Right. So uh, just a little bit of a brief on Fresh Team. So uh, we'll get started with that. So Fresh Team, as you may know, um, as you can see on screen, is uh, the industry's best HRMS for small businesses and for startups. And uh, it's trusted by 9,000 plus brands across the world uh, and has modules on recruitment, onboarding, employee database, and time off. And uh, as part of the Fresh Team series, what we've been doing is uh, bringing, a, bringing our audience, our customers, and the larger Freshworks and um, broader audience insights on how things work for uh, startups in terms of recruitment, or in this case, in terms of employee engagement and employee benefits. So we have startup founders coming in to share their lessons with us and what worked and even what didn't, so that that shared learning helps new entrepreneurs and founders like you. So in today's episode, uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, we'd be focusing on how to design employee benefits for small teams. And we have three startup founders who have done this in various ways by taking, their, taking different paths for their own startups. So we thank uh, them for joining us today. And um, I'll give you a brief introduction about all of them. So we have Ritesh, Arvind, and Ankit joining us on the panel today. And um, you have me, that's Sherim, uh, hosting this discussion. And uh, I, so I go on to introducing each of the founders uh, in brief. So Ritesh Agarwal is the founder of Apicodes, and uh, he is a tech entrepreneur and he's building technology products. And that's what drives him day and night. And uh, he has embarked on this entrepreneurial journey in the middle of a successful corporate career. And he's also an IIM Bangalore double gold medalist and an IIT Bombay graduate. Um, Apicodes, uh, in, uh, to describe what they do, they are an award-winning tech company and they specialize in building uh, tech products and tech solutions for web and mobile platforms. And they are a seven-year-old organization based out of Siliguri in West Bengal. And they have a team of 25 techies. And uh, next we have Arvind Murthy uh, on the panel. He is a second time entrepreneur. He's the founder of Factors AI. He graduated from the Indian Institute of Science and he started his career with Google, uh, in Google News Search and Ranking. And his uh, first startup chat was acquired by Freshworks uh, and post joining Freshworks with the acquisition, he built chat and collaboration products for Freshworks. And he later founded Factors.ai, which is an analytics product for B2B marketers. Uh, thirdly, we have Ankit. Uh, Ankit is the CEO at Oslash and where he dons multiple hats. Uh, he is looking after product design, he's looking after marketing, sales, investor relations, and much more. And Ankit ventured into uh, SaaS as a product manager at Zoho, where he understood the importance of cloud-based SaaS applications as the future. And Oslash is an um, enterprise URL manager that helps teams 
to manage and share information through um, internally naming important links. So currently OSlash is adopted by 3000 teams worldwide, including CRED, uh, Twitch and Khan Academy. So that's a brief about all three founders. So today let's learn from OSlash, uh, Factors.ai and Apicodes on how employee benefits has benefited them truly in terms of retaining and motivating talent. So before we move into the panel discussion itself, we wanted to share the findings of a poll that we conducted with our audience. So um, we often wonder how important employee benefits really are. And when we surveyed a, a set of employees, this is what we found out that almost 90% of them find it very important while deciding to switch or stay with their current employer. And this finding is also in sync with other larger uh, primary research that has happened externally. So if you look at um, one of the studies show that especially today, since most of the workforce consists of millennial and Gen Z employees. Um, you know, I can't believe that uh, Yeah, for millennial employees, we've already been like more than a decade in the workforce right now. It's the time for Gen Z employees and with the um, influx of all of this young talent, uh, how they look at employee benefits is also changing and a, a whooping 78% of them believe that employee benefits determine whether they'd stay or leave their current organization. And uh, one other statistic even uh, goes ahead to, to say that 49% of employees would look for a new job in the next 12 months if they are dissatisfied with their employee benefits. Right? So this is what we um, see when it comes to how important employee benefits are uh, when you structure it for your organization. All right, so um, thank you. Now we'll move on to the panel discussion. So uh, what we'd be covering in the panel discussion is uh, how do you use employee benefits to attract the right talent? How do you use it to retain your employees? And um, retention is of course very different from motivation. So how do you use employee benefits to motivate your employees? And we'll finally look at some tips and tools that uh, the founders have for startups from this entire session. All right, so let's get started with the panel discussion now. Um, thank you, Ritesh. Thank you, Arun, and thank you, Ankit, for joining us today. And we're glad to hear from you in terms of uh, what your views and learnings are on this particular topic. So to start off with, um, we'll speak a bit about how we attract talent um, through employee benefits. So uh, before that, Ritesh, do you have this as a challenge at all for your organization? Do you um, face an issue with attracting talent uh, as a startup? Hi everyone, hi Sherin. Uh, so Sherin, to answer your question, uh, we are a, we are a tech company, which means we 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 always look out for employees in the IT space. Uh, our organization is based in Siliguri, which is somewhere between a tier two and a tier three town, as as you might call it. And and IT as as an industry is unheard of here. So that with that background, yes, it is. I mean, the, the, the structure of our company itself, it makes it a bit, big challenge for us to attract employees. We work with the best of the best. So, so we, we, we are looking for employees who, who can perform in, in, that, in that fashion. So yes, it is a challenge uh, if we consider the structure, but considering that IT isn't a, 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 an industry here, that also comes to us as an advantage, meaning that, uh, the, the few people who are interested in this space and who wish to work from their hometown or who do not wish to move to a, a bigger city, they have certain family ties or they, they wish to work from home. For, they, for them, we are the perfect fit because the way we've set it up, we, we have established ourselves as a leader in this space, in this region. So therefore, anyone looking to work in a in a good and progressive organization with a with a challenging uh, uh, work scenario, good uh, uh, work benefits, uh, they typically find us themselves, and we it, it's not us who have to do the the, the findings. So in that way, yes, uh, we have a challenge, but uh, it, with especially after COVID, this has become easier for us because people are finding us uh, because of who we are and where we are based. Okay, 
Yes, um, I think especially after COVID, we've had a lot of people opting in to work closer to their hometowns. Uh, but uh, I think maybe O slash and factors or AI uh, based out of metro cities. Uh, how do you think, um, you know, what kind of issues do you face and how do you think your employee benefits are helping you to attract talent uh, when it comes to competing against bigger companies in the metros? Arvind, maybe we can get started with you. All right. So, uh, so when we started, right, uh, it was basically uh, we got incorporated and we were waiting for a seed fund to hit the banks and uh, right in that time, COVID hit us, right? And uh, uh, we were like, okay, figuring out how to do things. And even the team we set up uh, was remote in initially. So we've been remote uh, that way since day one. So that has worked out as an advantage. Uh, People have got used uh, to be remote. We are continuing being remote and trying to figure things out as we go forward. Uh, I mean, remote meaning we are uh, kind of, all the founders are in Bangalore and there are a few employees in Bangalore, but rest of them are dispersed all around India. So so when we pitch to a candidate, uh, I mean, uh, generally, uh, I, if they're in uh, Bangalore, then it works out well. If not, we say we're flexible and a lot of times people don't want to shift uh, or uh, they want to kind of be at home for uh, some or the re other reason. And that works out as a good differentiator for the candidate. Having said that, uh, when it comes to em employee benefits, uh, and the biggest challenge is to get the candidate to the interview, right? Like, uh, I mean, before you even talk about pay or benefits, for them to go to the interview process, you had to pitch to them. And during that time, what we pitch is basically I mean, I generally have a call, a half an hour call with the candidate and pitch uh, things like uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, challenges, uh, challenging problems that we are solving, the kind of tech that we are working with, uh, the kind of growth the candidate can see, the kind of peers they'll get to work with and so on, right? So so most mostly intangible uh, benefits on, um, on the career growth and the things that we work on is what I try to pitch. And if that that interests uh, the candidate uh, usually uh, from that it's usually we can figure out a way uh, 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 post the interview process and so on so uh, so so that's how it's, it currently works when it comes to attracting talent yeah. Ankit what about you what has been your experience what are things that uh, <coughs> what has worked for you but I think I have an easier give than both irritation or uh, I'm not in Siliguri Right. Uh, I uh, when we are in Bangalore, we are not remote. We have never been remote. Even in COVID, all of us were like locked in one building where we had like three times food being cooked by a chef. Uh, I I just don't get remote for an early stage. I mean, this is my opinion. It's controversial. I know that I'm not a big fan of remote at all. Because early stage, when you're trying to build something, you need to have a lot of trust in the team and each other. And some of this trust, very hard to do it over. Zoom, right? You, you need to know each other, their, their good things, their bad things, and all of that. So uh, I think that becomes a problem for us, right? Because we are not remote, all of us have to move to Bangalore. So even though the company is in Bangalore, like, I think none of us are from Bangalore, like including the founder. No one else from Bangalore. So all of us have, like 60% of the company is probably from Tamil Nadu. Right? So the question I keep getting a lot is why, why we don't have an office in Chennai. <laughs> so, uh, and I, in terms of benefits, I think the biggest benefit is just, as I say, like be more human with people, understand that they are moving from different cities. So try to make their life easy when they're moving to a new city, right? Uh, we take care of everything. We take care of like first month. I mean, relocation obviously is every company does that, but even your first month rent is on us. Uh, there are three brokers who work with all the O slash who will make sure you find home before you even join Bangalore. Uh, you know, taking care of uh, all the food expenses, all the travel expenses, uh, even daily commute to office is taken care of. So, I, I mean, and more so, like, my bigger philosophy is that any post-tax expenses of employees can become a pre-tax expense of a company. And I keep that in mind every time we take any decision for employee benefits. Because a company will obviously have a more negotiation power when you are trying to, you know, do something, buying insurance, you know, buying, buying catering vendors, buying travel, things like that. So, uh, and it's, I mean, we've been lucky. We don't have problem people getting an interview. I think we have more problems in terms of like, at what level switching people from competing with Google, Facebook, all of this is a problem for us. But uh, uh, 
at least i mean compared to both you know arguments i have heard we have been a more fortunate ankit but there's i think one example um of a uh, employee from google who had actually ended up switching to o slash right how did that happen yeah i, I think uh, it's you know it's it's about a lot of people want different things in different stages in life right if uh, you are starting out you are 21 year old from one of the best colleges out there you know you want to explore the google side of the world right you want to be in a in a very high impact high pampered organization uh, after that i think maybe like 6 7 years you want to build something from zero to one right we all talk about like working in large tech companies but i've actually worked in a large tech company and you know it's very difficult to make impact after a certain period of time right you need to make massive impact like in google if you don't have like 100 million revenue your product is not even like in front of ceo office right so i think people want different stage and i think you need to just appeal to them right if someone is trying to say that okay i want to be part of the building process i really care about what you're building right so I, as i said we don't have problem getting people to interview i think our biggest motivation is do you care about the product we honestly don't take that extensive technical interviews because we know sometime people people will get there if not today tomorrow but if you care about the product it sort of comes along so okay. i think that is the only marker and the google employee who is switched really cared about it so that worked okay all right okay thanks thanks for sharing that ankit yeah so um you know we have uh, ankit's example of how somebody from a big company even did end up uh, switching to a startup uh, because of the kind of work or the kind of promise that the um, that working in a startup itself holds right so uh, that that's an amazing uh, example for everybody who's listening in and um, we have a question for all of you Uh, do you think employee benefits can be personalized for new hires especially with um, gen z wanting everything to be sort of personalized for them do you think this is possible uh, do you think this is the right approach just getting in your viewpoints again there's no right or wrong answer yet just wanting to see and it feels like a lot of people are voting for yes so <laughs> that's some insight to the founders as well in terms of how um, the new workforce is looking at employee benefits being given to them Okay, so uh, moving on to the next section, um, I think this is a larger problem than even attracting talent. Uh, it is to do with retaining talent, right? Because um, I think even today you were mentioning that uh, when it comes to um, finding an IT company in your region, you know, you stand out, and hence you know it's not as difficult to attract talent there. but uh with covid now a lot of works a lot of jobs have become remote a lot of work um is uh you know a lot of work benefits are being given to remote work and so on and these are being given by big companies too right so irrespective of whether you are in metros or if you are in smaller cities um retention becomes a very real problem and uh, this is a question that we asked our audience so uh, can we have the poll results on screen please uh we wanted to find out why employee benefits are important to people right and uh, when we look at this uh, you know it's an astounding three out of four people if you look at the stats say that they care about employee benefits because they indicate how much the employer cares about you even more than a sense of security or a sense of pride that they're looking at they're more concerned about uh, you know does my employer truly care about me right and um, thank you so uh, what we're looking at is retaining talent hence uh, becomes also a function of understanding how the current workforce thinks and how they view employee benefits overall and not just about uh, like a checklist item of you know what are we giving them right so how does api codes look at this retention um, what are some of the things that you've done to retain your employees and how Uh, is, is this an issue that you face, and how big big of an issue, or uh, how how important is it to you? I would say this is the the top issue on my head uh, when I wake up and when I go to sleep. Uh, how how do I how do I tell people I care? And and that's the 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 stat that you got is perfect. Uh, we we do care, and we we just need to find out ways to show that we care. Uh, it's a I wouldn't say we we've, we've aced this subject. It's a, it's a subject we are dealing with day in and day out. But a lot of things that we have tried out very aggressively over the last one year 
I mean, I, I, I could share uh, the top things that come to my mind. Uh, so uh, the, the, the biggest uh, and well-branded thing we've done is something called Happy Happy. So we've introduced this concept where we, we have happiness officers appointed within the company. So, so every quarter we have four happiness officers, they get, they rotate every quarter and happiness officers are given a budget to define and to plan the happiness activities for that quarter. So, 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 so it's, it's like, okay, here's a budget, uh, tell us and brainstorm as a team and discuss what you want to do, whether you want to get a foosball table, whether you want to order a new coffee machine, whether you want to, you, you want to have a, a beer party or, or whatsoever. I mean, uh, just, uh, just uh, plan your own. Uh, it's like a do-it-yourself thing. Here, here's a budget we've laid out. Uh, uh, tell us what you want. Uh, let's brainstorm together as a team and, and, and see how you can use it to the fullest. So, so that's something that really worked for us. Uh, people are really taking... And, and I get and we get insights what people want and not so, so much what we want to do for them. So, uh, so, so that, that really helps. Um, other than that, something more uh, uh, concrete uh, is people that, that we have people who have been with us for five years, and and we 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 decided it is it is important we show them uh, something in return for their loyalty to us. So I mean, we offered share in profits to people who have um, um, spent a certain amount of time with us, and that is something that they have uh, really valued in return. Uh, we we do a lot of sports. Uh, we, we really think that helps in team building and uh, just it's something to chat about at office lunch and and generally at fun time so so we do futsal we do cricket we do we do all kinds of things and I think yeah I mean up on the top of my head these are a few things we've been really investing in and still I mean every day it's a struggle thinking of new ways uh, because now we're not competing with other companies here we are competing with everyone in the world who's probably offering a remote job. So, yeah, I mean, these, these are the top things that come to my head. Okay. Ankit, what about you? You don't um, probably believe in remote work, but you're still competing with all of those companies when it comes to retaining your talent. So what is it that has worked for you? I, I naively used to think uh, everything revolves around incentives, right? Uh, and at least... So a couple of, you know, lately I've come to realize that incentives, I mean, it helps to some extent. You obviously need a hygiene of life. You know, you need a good compensation. You need high ESOPs. Uh, you know, we have made our entire ESOP policy public, which, I mean, which has really helped a lot of people understanding how it should be done. It's among the generous ESOPs in the startups. You have 15% allocation in the seed round itself. Uh, but at the end, I think what matters is a sense of gratification which people are looking for that they are part of something right we all want to be part of something which is trying to bring that change and i i just try to make people realize that we are all in this together good thing or bad thing and one thing i learned from my ex boss was that happiness is reality minus expectation right so as a startup if you say that okay you start thinking like a business you are setting the entire team with an expectation to think like a business we are not a business we are Still figuring it out, right? Uh, I mean, fresh is a business now. So, it's actually not a business yet. We are still a product. We're running experiments. So, get people motivated around that, right? Don't say that okay, I need start thinking like a business. So, you are you you can't compete with the company where you know they have so much budget just for employee benefits. So, your retention goes around thinking that having making sure people challenge a lot, and I think that has got changed our hiring philosophy, right? We uh, and I think we talk about something called there's a weak link game and there's a strong link game. So, uh, so basketball is a weak link game. So if you follow basketball, someone like Stephen Curry can take ball from one court to another court just by himself and, you know, Golden State Warriors can win. Football is a strong link game. You need to have the strong links between each other so that someone can take... I mean, Messi is good, but you still need that beautiful passes to win, you know, to win the club. So we have always hired people who have extremely large team empathy. Right. So you have to work in a team. We will never hire a solo. We will never hire an IC. We will never hire... So you have worked in a team. You always talk about team. Like my first thing in interviews is the person using I or we. If everything is around we, 
you understand okay this person because um this helps in retention a team will always stand together one person might think of attrition alone so if at all we have had attrition we had like two people leaving our slash at once because they wanted to start up we never had one person leaving our slash so my thinking i don't think i have a concrete answer how we have solved this a lot of things around with having people challenged every day and making them feel that they are part of something and obviously the hygiene factors like benefits take care of all their expenses give very high subs you know they are coming to shadow they are taking a risk right i can talk about technicality which we did was that the founder resource is not separate from employee so right they have the same stock they buy the same stock they want right all of that we have done but uh, i think the thing which made a difference is being part of the team okay yeah thanks for sharing that agar i don't know what about you uh, you know you have what work as a differentiator in acting but yeah it's the same thing that probably also uh, you know it makes a level ground to compete with a lot of other uh, bigger companies so how do you tackle it yeah i mean uh, um, the way uh, i mean the way we think about it is basically once uh, somebody is a part of your company right uh, they won't be leaving for uh, reasons like benefits or uh, uh, small incremental things on top of it right like uh, benefits are good it's good to have but it's more of an uh, like or having fun right or having uh, having a good time it, it's more of or of an more of an effect of the uh, culture rather than something that can be done to induce into the team right so so if you are a happy team if you are a healthy team you'll have fun right so uh, so to that extent uh, what we try to do is basically try to ensure a good work culture right and uh, and we uh, and i've been I, i have worked in google no amount of benefits can actually uh, make you feel that oh I, I, i'm i'm happy doing what i'm doing right like at the end of the day everybody wants to do something they want to learn they want to uh, build or they want to ship something right so that satisfaction uh, is something that we want to try to ensure we start with that uh, trust level saying that okay everybody wants to do uh, every, everybody wants to perform at some level right and we we do have opinions we do have policies but then we all also listen to the uh, person who has a problem with it we, and we can make exceptions uh, there's n- there's no hard and fast rules and hence to that extent uh, remote has worked out right like we 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 could have imposed that we want everybody back but uh, doing that suddenly is also again hard for us given that we were a remote first company so so we try to figure things out uh, uh, and even Uh, with regard to expectation or anything else uh, we try to actually celebrate the effort and uh, the progress rather than just an end outcome right and and try to do and uh, try to do things in that direction right and when it comes to like say even flexibility right like we had cases where uh, one of the employees uh, had a pressing personal issue and he had to take care of a family business also and Uh, he had to uh, he could he said that i can do at most 4 uh, to 5 hours 4 uh, to 5 hours a day and up to 20 hours a week right so we converted him to a consultant we worked with him 20 hours a week uh, and then 3 uh, months later or 3 to 6 months later he came back and joined us as uh, an employee again right so so giving that flexibility given that we are a, a small team it's even more uh, as you said we can make things more personalized on their needs right and uh, it's very easy for us and that is one one thing that we uh, try to ensure when trying to retain uh, employees in the org okay thanks for sharing that adil uh, yeah uh, something like uh, you know personalizing uh, even like the kind of job role that you've done um, right converting an employee into a consultant just to accommodate them um, those are definitely things that uh, show so the employer cares right so uh, maybe one other question on that front um i think of late the younger workforce also places a lot of importance on um the time off how is time off being uh, looked at by the employer um is it uh, you know how, how does the employer show they care in terms of how they administer time off policies also right so maybe just one um quick question to um, each of you uh, is your time off policy structured differently or how do you look at um, time off in the sense of showing how you care about your employees or is it true that uh, startups mean that you know you don't have the luxury of taking too much time off how is it uh, how has your experience been we have a very standardized time off policy and what we do is 
we strongly encourage everyone to utilize that to the fullest uh, and design it in, in your own way. If you want to take one big uh, block of time off, if you want to uh, space it out, uh, uh, what we, and, and this is something we do consciously to, to show that we, we, we really care about your, your life outside of work. We, we encourage them to take it. Uh, there are people who uh, can, can work in certain hours of the day uh, and, and we, we're totally flexible with that. Uh, so if, if, if you want to come to office on, on the post lunch and, and just want to make up for the lost time at home, feel, feel free to do, do that. So, so uh, definitely, I mean, this is something we, we are very strongly uh, supportive of. And uh, we even have, I mean, young, uh, uh, young bloods in, in the company who, who want to, who, who, not, who not satisfied, I mean, uh, even working eight hours in, in the office, they, they're like, okay, I mean, I, I, could something, I could do something more while at home. I'm, anyways, I'm, I'm on my laptop, I, I'm researching stuff. Why don't you give me something that, that I, I can build? So, so we also offer that as an option if, if you would like to spend additional time. If at all you'd like to do something, we, we are happy to come. On that point in the next segment, it is. <laughs> okay. okay. That, that's a slightly different take on, you know, people asking for more work than, than uh -huh. time off. So we'll come back. No, so, yeah, on, yeah, on time off, I think that's all I had to share. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ankit and Arvind, uh, anything uh, different that you do in terms of your time off policy? Oh, okay, I can go first. Uh, I'm going to give an answer a lot of people are not going to like. You know, we, uh, I mean, we don't have a leave policy per se. Right? I mean, a lot of people in the company have been asking me to get it out. You know, I don't know how many people are listening to this, but like I'm saying, oh, we don't have a leave policy right now. We should set up one. But every time someone, you know, especially uh, you're talking about how Gen Z are asking for very time off and asking for like a very good work-life balance. I think that's like I say it right out in the interview that is not going to happen. I mean, you are joining, see, a startup is a long tail curve, right? If you look at normal distribution of a curve, you are trying to do wealth creation on the far end of the curve. So it is a long tail event. The very fact that a startup will succeed is a long tail event, which will be built by people who are coming from long tail outcomes, attempting, attempting to make long tail outcomes success. So if you have all this in mind, you can't expect that you will live a normal life making Microsoft level salary and saying that I want all the outcomes of a startup succeeding. That expectation itself is wrong. So if you, I usually start with that discussion and everything that follows, I say, start aligning yourself, whether you are a right fit or not. If you're a right fit, you will set up in the team. If you're not, you know what it is. This is what it takes. We have to make bets, which probably no one else in the world has taken to reach where no one else has reached. So it's an it's a exercise in wealth creation. Like in three, four years, we're trying to make something which has never happened. So, I mean, at that point, if you start asking for balance, again, leave policy is something more different. Like, I mean, we should have a leave policy because we should ask people to take time off. But I think you start making people realize that how much their time is worth, right? If you if a startup employee owns 2% of the company and the company is $10 million, that per hour rate of their every effort they are doing is upwards of $300 in net wealth creation. Start thinking of $300 per hour is something worth your time. Then if you start thinking like this, you'll start thinking like French people that, okay, I'm only going to work eight hours a day, but I'll make it count. So I usually bring that discussion back. Like if you're focused, you can take time off for as much as you want. And uh, But, you know, align that, okay, stop expecting you will have balance. You will not have balance because you came into this world asking not for balance, joining a startup. Thanks for sharing that alternate view to uh, Ankit. Maybe let's hear it from Arvind on which side he's on? Yeah, so, I mean, again, uh, we do have on paper uh, a policy of uh, a fixed number of leaves which we'll take. We also use a tool to uh, uh, keep track. I mean, people can apply for leave over there or uh, generally what we say is inform your team it's it, that you're taking leave, right? Like, I think it's more important that you figure it out with your team when you can take the leave, right? Uh, and uh, at what point, uh, or is it fine to take the leave? Uh, so what, I mean, it's, it's not a problem. Uh, it's, uh, we, we generally figure it out again, one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a problem. People don't take so many leave offs. We actually say people to take leave offs actually, because people don't take so many leave offs. If, and if that's like the, they're getting married or something, then it's fine. Uh, they take 10 days off, uh, or something like that, which, which works out well for us. So, uh, so 
so again, we start with that position of trust, and actually, uh, in most teams and organizations, I see that people don't take a time off where you can actually take the time off, right? Uh, uh, and with, uh, and if somebody wants to take time off, uh, or if there's some genuine reason for which they want to take time off, we definitely encourage them uh, all the way to take it. Okay, uh, thanks for adding that, Arun. So I think in the meantime, we have the results from the poll that we've just had with our live audience, and a lot of them are, are voting on rewards and recognition uh, as their choice way of um, retaining talent. So maybe let's move into the next segment where we're talking about uh, motivating talent. Uh, to the audience, please keep sharing your questions. We're we are going to take them uh, in some time. And um, depending on who gets the best question to the panelists, we also have a surprise gift waiting for you uh, from our Harvard Business Review uh, best-selling author. So um, keep asking your questions. We'll come back to you in a bit. Meanwhile, let's move to motivating talent, right? Rewards and recognition sort of falls into that category. So, uh, with, so we've, I, I think every year of COVID, uh, since COVID actually, has brought in like a sort of a catchphrase or a term when it comes to the employee HR domain. We had the great resignation and there was the great layoffs, uh, you know, and then now the what's being spoken about is quiet quitting and moonlighting and, and all of those things, you know, and a lot of this has to do, especially, you know, the recent trend on quiet quitting has to do with, um, so I think somebody's also been asking, you know, what are employee benefits rates? So anything which is non-paycheck related. So apart from the wages, anything that you give your employee, uh, could be termed as an employee benefit. So just to answer that question on the chat. And uh, in this case, when it comes to motivating an employee, um, what role do you think employee benefits can play? Because for startups, you can't afford to have your employees quite quit. So for the benefit of the audience, quite quitting means when somebody is just barely getting by their job. So they have their job, but um, they aren't motivated to perform, right? They uh, they just get by. And for startups, especially startups with small teams, uh, your performance, the company's performance is accumulation or cumulative effort of all the individual performances of people. So you can't afford to have quiet quitting or, you know, all the other uh, lack of employee motivation terms happening there. So how do you uh, tackle this? How do you motivate your talent? Um, how do you look at recognition or rewards or anything um, and that in that front. Ritesh, now maybe uh, you can share with us what makes your company people ask for more work <laughs> instead of more time off. First of all, I, I strongly agree with what Ankit said. Even I was naive to believe that, I mean, if, if you have incentives, if, if you have, I mean, money w w would drive, more money would drive more commitment uh, and I, I used to think that for for a couple of years until uh, I, I started opening up with with this uh, topic up with with my team and which is when I, I got enlightened from my team that no I mean more than that what what really mattered to us was that small newcomer trophy that you that you gave me three years back and and those kind of that 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 uh, nukkar natak that we had in the office uh, or during the Independence Day and which is when we got thinking maybe we've just read this thing whole absolutely wrong. Yeah, I mean, in project incentives, work incentives, all of these things do motivate people at the end of the day. But what really makes a difference is, are these small tokens that you that you show during regular course of work. So so which is why, I mean, this is not something we, we, we really did well and we are we're trying to start it now. But what, what I have understood by speaking with a lot of people from my company is, these small tokens of appreciation, these tokens of things to show that you're a part of this bigger family and, and you're not just, we, we don't just have a transactional relationship with you. This really motivates people. Um, and, and, and I think it, what, what motivates them to ask for more work, and then even after hours is if you can, I mean, we are, we are, we are in the tech industry. So if someone's working on something that's, that's really interesting, that's cutting edge, and, and helps them in building their uh, uh, skills as a career, uh, then, then they would always want for, for more work. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm learning React today, but there, there's a Flutter 
there's there's a flutter opportunity coming up um, i i really want to i mean i'm happy to put a, a time after hours but i really want to take that project up so 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 i think these small tokens and and getting people to i mean giving people the opportunity to work with things they really want to these two things are something that's that i find is really motivating people uh, in our company okay i think that also answers one of the questions in chat on uh, why do people sometimes work on a weekend i think ritesh would answer that by saying that you know you have employees asking to work on weekends when the work is really exciting so that's a really nice perspective ritesh um arvind or ankit what uh, what has been your experience in terms of what you've been doing to motivate your talent um what's uh, what has worked for you in terms of uh, maybe i'll start with arvind what has worked for you in terms of recognizing them or appreciating them so far and what do you think you could do better i mean uh, in in my opinion work itself uh, should be self rewarding right uh, i mean as like when when i joined uh, uh, every time my boss used to appreciate me i always used to find it uh, condescending I, I, I didn't i didn't like it so much actually and so probably i might be lacking in that uh, regard in in showing uh, explicit uh, recognition or uh, explicit i mean i mean show recognition but i uh, do going the extra mile to show token of appreciation and other things but what uh, the way we uh, the way we keep uh, the way i think of keep, keeping people engaged is basically uh, set expectations on a regular basis uh, weekly basis on what what can be achieved and then if they are stuck figure out the way to actually unblock them or figure out how to actually uh, make, help them make progress or figure out how to uh, uh, kind of push them right uh, or if there's some problem figure out a problem and see can we uh, back down on the expectations a bit right so so that's that's where i play most of the role uh, uh, and uh, post that right i mean i i think like like just like customer success i think myself as employee success like what what can i do to make employees successful right like i want them to be successful at the end of the day so that that is what uh, uh, that that is what i try to uh, do and in terms of feedback generally both expectations or if any customer love that we get i try to pass it on as much as possible to to the people i work with so so that coming from them uh, i believe uh, should be a bigger motivation for people as it thanks arvin i think i really like the point about you looking at yourself as how to enable employee success right so uh, that really is you know the crux of what uh, we are looking at when we are talking about this topic as well ankit uh, what are some of the things that um, have worked for you in terms of motivating your employees this is some area i can do some improvement personally myself uh, so i did get a coach uh, sort of an executive coach uh, for vcs wanted me to have one and you know one thing i learned is uh, i mean he, he kept saying to me that you know is you can't take you can't take all on you you also have to create managers who know how to talk right and sometimes you know when you do like one on ones and all people don't know how to have one on ones like how do you start a conversation so he gave me like a five liner on how to have one on one i'm posting it in a channel i thought everyone can use it so ask simple questions to people what is making you angry what is your fear what are you sad about what is making you joy and what are you excited about right you start this question and you can i mean you can have this discussion with your spouse or girlfriend and you can have a half an hour conversation you can talk to anyone about this five questions and almost always you will understand what is the biggest fear they have and i think a big part of motivation is uh, elevating that fear right if you elevate that fear almost always what is left is a uh, desire to succeed right so what we have done is we have made it like a playbook that every manager will have to start with this and and then you almost come towards that okay this is what will keep me motivated right you, the last question is what are you excited about and i think that has helped us a lot you know i mean different people get excited by different things you know for someone you know i mean i don't know like giving an iphone 14 might be exciting right because like they really wanted to use it for someone you know that uh, i'm so great and they love that yeah <laughs> never know there you go right uh, so i mean something as simple as that right? like we we moved to a new office and you know everyone had like double screens extra screens right and because one person who joined and no one noticed that the person did not have an extra screen right you just i mean you start up you don't have like a big hr team and all of that and the person thought that he has done something wrong because he doesn't have an extra screen and i was like you know and if i had not asked this question right what has made you sad that would have never come out 
Uh, he was in like denial that there's something has gone wrong. And I think, you know, people are complicated. All of us are complicated, right? And uh, one thing I always try to do in interview is, uh, I say, you go to dance with a girl who wants to dance with you, right? So ask people whether they want to do this, right? Why will you make them do something if they don't? If you have a front-end engineer, why do you want them code? In you know, how would you want them to write some testing or something, right? Like if you just ask people, do they want to do this, right? If it comes from them, automatically there is an inherent reward. You know, I think both Edwin and Ritesh mentioned about that, like. Yeah, uh, thanks for that, Ankit. Uh, actually, that's one of the things that we uh, also maybe want to hear from our audience on, right? Um, do you think that, uh, I think Ritesh also mentioned earlier that, uh, the budget is sort of given to the team to sort of figure out what they want to do and things like that, right? So uh, do you think crowdsourcing these sort of policies or, you know, so, sort of getting this two-way feedback uh, is key to eliminating quiet quitting because then the employees feel like they are part of it. But yes, yeah. So the question to you, Arvind, is um, in the absence of face-to-face -face interaction, how do you implement uh, employee benefits? You know, what... Uh, yeah, so I think uh, uh, the challenge of remote work is um, the level of engagement uh, uh, that you would possibly get um, meeting face to face, right? And how how do you keep how do you keep uh, everyone engaged? How do you f figure out uh, uh, whether they are uh, like uh, demotivated or uh, not up to it, right? So, so uh, or or the other thing is uh, basically inhibition to actually uh, approach someone right because if you have met someone you wouldn't have the inhibition to uh, approach that person whereas uh, if if you have only chatted with them on slack then probably you wouldn't be you wouldn't be that open to reach out to them right uh, so so we use slack for uh, uh, our communication most of our communication happens over there Having said that, uh, uh, we catch up every week, um, at least once, like uh, apart from ad hoc meetings, uh, we catch up every week to figure out what we're working on, what we do, uh, what, how much progress we've made, what, what, what do we do next, right? So that we do uh, uh, religiously. And, and, if it, and even if it's a communication, we encourage uh, basically like a five minute ad hoc call is better than like uh, asynchronous, chats that go for a long time, right? Asynchronous is fine, but uh, to the extent possible, uh, come into a huddle, three or four people, talk it out and uh, move on, right? And uh, so that's how we uh, do it. Apart from that face-to-face, -face, like the family, uh, to get that familiarity, what we started doing is basically uh, every four months or so, we, we, we catch up. Uh, we do like a three to four day offsite. We just did one and we will be doing that again. So that kind of helps in uh, bringing the familiarity with others. So, so I would say we're still figuring it out actually. And uh, we're trying to uh, make that work. I mean, we had to figure it out during COVID uh, and uh, uh, and we are f figuring it out how to continue that and improve the engagement as we go forward. Yeah. And I remember, I think in one of our chats, um, you were also mentioning how simple things like just uh, appreciating people, passing on customer feedback, just e even if it's on the Slack channel and things like that, they uh, make up for a lot of uh, not being in, in the sort of a, a thing when the entire team sort of comes together to appreciate somebody or to uh, pass on that feedback. So uh, that's great as well. So we are almost at the last um, part of our segment considering the time as well. So uh, just um, to close off, a uh, couple of questions uh, to the founders and uh, we'll keep it quick uh, for want of time. So what are some uh, tools that help you with sort of an administri uh, administering these employee benefits to your teams uh, or help with your employee productivity and motivation overall? And uh, okay, maybe we'll just take that question first if you can um, let us know what are some of the things that you look at, Ritesh, you want to uh, talk about it? tools that we use day to day for our work and how what what additional to these tools can help make uh, employee benefits and uh, employee motivation better correct i think the most important uh, two most important thing that comes to mind is one how how easy is hr ops so if your hr the, the the process to apply leave apply for an advance things like that should not be painful so so we 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 are now in, uh, integrating uh, add-ons to slack uh, that directly allow people to uh, do these things on Slack itself. Uh, other than that, on the softer side of things, uh, what has really, I mean, something that has stood out is, 
I mean, I'll just give an example. So there's something called a Slack donut. It, it's, it just asks a stupid question once a day. And people just start responding with random answers to that stupid question. Like if you were a movie star, if, if you were to, if you had the opportunity to date one movie star, who would it be? And that sparks a nice and interesting conversation that, that you all have a laugh about. And, and yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I think that's, that's these, this is the probably only few uh, tool kind of things that come to mind when, when, when you talk about motivation. The yeah. bigger part is outside of this uh, in our human interactions. But yeah, I mean, these kind of things do help in, in sparking off conversations. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Um, Arvind, anything that you have to add on? I think you, especially uh, if you can also talk about maybe a couple of things that you should look out for when you're uh, looking at these tools. So when it comes to tools, uh, the main tools that we, I want to ensure that people have is uh, the productivity tools, right? Because uh, we use Slack, we use uh, uh, Razor Pay often to actually manage payroll, etc. Uh, so that is on the administrative side uh, that uh, that we have to use uh, uh, or Slack for co uh, communication. But when it comes to let's say tools or the technology that you are uh, that you are using for productivity, there we take special care actually to figure out uh, that we are using the best ones and uh, best in class uh, and also the right tech to uh, do things, right? The other thing, uh, like, uh, uh, and few things like uh, documenting things, right? Like if somebody's doing, uh, somebody has done it once, then if you document it, it's easier for the other person to actually uh, pick it up from there. So uh, things like documenting or even automating uh, to the extent possible, like your development setup can be completely automated. Uh, you can containerize it. Uh, you don't have to, once you join, you don't have to actually spend a lot of time trying to bring up your dev setup, make it easy to get, it up and start coding and so on. Right? Things around that is, uh, or uh, if you want to, uh, uh, let's say there's a repeated thing that you're doing on production or something, how can you automate it, right? So automating repeated tasks, like uh, as, I mean, as, since I take care mostly of tech, uh, as an engineer, I always say, if you have done something more, okay, do it for three to five times at most. Uh, post that, if it's taking some time, automate it. So, so, or find the right tool to make it easy, make life easier. So, so that uh, that way things will actually. I mean, uh, as a startup, you try you tend to do a lot of things in a suboptimal way, a manual way, but uh, just for the speed, initial speed. But uh, I think uh, we try to figure out how to actually automate sooner than later, uh, so that uh, you don't fall behind a lot. Thanks for sharing that, Arvind. Uh, Ankit, any tips from you in terms of maybe a couple of things that you need to look out for um, when we uh, select tools to improve productivity? Well, especially for early stage startups. Uh, so I've come to love, you know, being a little more theatrical with all your actions when you are in startup, right? So for example, uh, it's something very simple, right? Uh, if you're joining startup, I mean, at least from what I've known, a lot of employees don't understand shops and how much shares they own because you know i mean you don't in very rarely you will have like an ESOP policy management software like carta or something to stall day one but we took a we took a call and you know they generate a share certificate so we actually take a printout and we give it to them right. this is the first time now you're actually holding a share certificate of a company right uh, it feels like very theoretical you know you take a picture of that and all of that Right. So we do that, like, I mean, so try to, we try to have a materialistic value of every tool you're trying to use, right? So in Slack, we have this channel called Kudos. I don't know, I didn't get it, some intern created it, but that channel, if everyone is doing some good deed, just put it there, that, okay, this person helped me doing that. And then someone wrote a bot calculating how many Kudos is there. Now there's a leaderboard of Kudos inside a company, right? So if someone gets 10, 15 Kudos, you know, it's like, you know, there is some good time for something like that. Right? So you can do things like that, right? Uh, so we have tried to make things more, like, for example, every Friday evening, 6 p.m., one hour we try to break our own product. Whoever breaks it, any engineer wins, right? Like, so, like, you know, there's a bug bounty or someone is trying to create, like, at one point, like, someone created 100,000 shortcuts in one hour, right? Imagine that. Like, I don't think Oshkash was even good for that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so things like that, right? Try to make things more theatrical because rituals matter. You know, there's something I learned from Airbnb that Airbnb had a lot of rituals around people joining their company, right? Uh, and rituals go beyond tools. 
going to drop that because we have we are almost at the end of our segment uh, but thank you for sharing that so to just summarize um, you know all, all that our uh, founders on the panel have shared uh, you know what helps in terms of team motivation is always a mix of human and uh, tech right it's not just the tech part um, or you know outsourcing it to somebody else but very human in terms of what um, helps uh, the employees feel like the employers really care. So uh, coming to that, uh, yeah, if if you want to check out Fresh Team, which is HR software to help with all of this, uh, then you can uh, please vote in the poll. Meanwhile, we have some exciting news for you. So uh, we'll take a couple of questions at the end if time permits. But uh, yes, we just wanted to announce that uh, Fresh Team comes with integrating all uh, the tools that are needed to make your employee benefit administration much easier. Uh, in fact, I think some of the founders call out Razor Pay X as one of their payroll uh, providers and uh, Fresh Team integrates with them. We also have other partners that are integrated in terms of administering benefits or even performance management uh, to do it more the Gen Z and millennial way than you know, like a rigid process. So more of two-way feedback and things like that. And the most exciting part is that in the upcoming weeks, Fresh Team will soon be integrated with Slack. So that allows you to uh, do everything that uh, you do with Slack, uh, uh, do for employee benefits right from your Slack screens, right? Be it, I think Ritesh was calling that out, uh, be it applying for a time off, approving the time off, um, be checking out who the new employee is, who's joined the team, checking out birthdays, uh, if the person is, um, you know, in, in, in uh, working that day or not. So to help with remote collaboration as well, to interview people remotely and so on. So for all of that, we have Fresh Teams integration with Slack coming right up. So uh, having said that, we are at the end of our session. Uh, so uh, please do let us know if you want to understand a little bit more about Fresh Team and how we make work simpler for you. Uh, all the awards that we won of sort of like a distation to uh, the kind of product that uh, Fresh Team is. And recently, Forbes has also recognized Fresh Team for being the best overall ADS worldwide. Uh, so that's something that we are uh, proud of too. And uh, like we said, we have 9,000 businesses around the world that trust us. And we'd love for uh, your companies to be one of them too. So please do take the free trial. There's no credit card required too. You can just sign up and uh, you know no strings attached whatsoever. If you don't like it, please give us the feedback so we'll know what we need to make better. And if you like it, please let us know so we uh, are encouraged by what we're doing, right? So thank you everybody for your questions. I think we have we we'll, uh, we are at the top of the hour, but we'll take just one question um, to end this, and we'll probably ask that to our panelists. <laughs> I think Ankit, I just saw your message on the slide, on the chat. Yes, yes, I've I'm, I'm not spoken to Ankit about him using Fresh Team at all. Honestly, okay, uh, please uh, believe that. So, um, I think one of the questions that I wanted to um, ask and end with is. Yes, I think this is the question. So what, uh, you know, like there's always a chance of um, you favoring one person over the other when it comes to re recognition and so on. Uh, if you can uh, just address what have you found as the most effective employee benefit from your employees perspective? What have they said um, that's worked for them? So far, we've been talking about what you think is best, but what do you think your employees have enjoyed the most? If you can just share that one thing, each of you will just end with that. I mean, in terms of uh, uh, tangible uh, benefit, uh, I think uh, uh, we offered uh, health insurance uh, and it was right in the time of COVID. And that at that point of time, it, uh, uh, it, it felt like a, a very strong, I mean, being a startup and a very small team, uh, uh, you, you, uh, most people didn't expect uh, that it could happen in a startup, but uh, offering that uh, uh, was very well appreciated among employees during that period. So, yeah. A, in our case, I have a very uh, recent example to share. So all of us together, we, I mean, the, the entire team of Apicots, we went out to a school for the specially able, and then we participated in this uh, community activity together as a team, where we, where we gifted a PC to the to the school for the for the children, and we gifted lunch to to the kids over there. And because everyone was a part of it, and they got to do this together as a team it really made them feel a part of this company. And I think that's one example that really, yeah, motivated people. 
so this is from employee perspective right uh, which is, i've come to learn we moved to this system of working called dri which stands for directly responsible individual so it's more like apple way of working where a single engineer can be a product owner of something and we changed the structure from teams to dri right? like uh, i mean we also 30 people so it was easy to change all this that changed a lot because people directly start feeling ownership about that and we give them budgets to everyone when i say budget i mean like you know everyone was given a card i i don't know there's like a insane sense of ownership which came where everyone was given card to buy whatever they want right uh i think that was something they valued a lot but yeah i, I think insurance is something which came second we we wanted to pay for even parental insurance and all of that because uh you know just I mean, your biggest cost is going to go in your education, your marriage, and your health. Take at least one thing away, right? So, um, and that helped a lot. Thanks, Akit. I think, um, yeah, so if we can uh, stop uh, screen sharing. Thank you uh, so much uh, to the panelists for joining us. I think at the end, uh, we ended on a high note by pointing out all of the things that almost have nothing to do with productivity per se, which, uh, uh, you know, uh, motivating your employees, but sort of these intangible things that you're talking about in terms of health coverage, parental coverage, um, you know, doing good for the community, giving back to the society, I think all of these things. And uh, that's why I would say um, unashamedly that it's very important to use the right technology to take care of all these mundane tasks so you can do more of these. So do check out Fresh Team, guys. And uh, yes, uh, big shout out to Apicods, Factors AI, and O Slash for and the founders for joining us here today. We loved having you on this panel. And thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. Thank you.